Hello everyone and welcome to today's assembly. Well, Easter isn't very far away now, is it? Are you hopefully looking forward to having some Easter eggs? Well, Easter isn't just about Easter eggs and cute bunnies. Here are some of the Open the Book team to share the Easter story with you. I hope you enjoy the story and it would be great if you could sing along with the songs too. Do any of you keep a diary? I do. I like to write down all the things that have happened during the day, what I have done and who I saw. Sometimes it's fun to look at an old diary and read about what I was doing five or even 10 years ago. A diary is also a good place to record special memories so that I don't forget them. Most diaries are quite personal things and only I and maybe one or two special people will get to read it. In today's story, we meet a man who, many years before, also wrote a diary, a special diary that is read by thousands of people every day as part of the Bible. Let's open the book and read John's story. John was getting old, his hair was grey, and in the evenings he found it hard to see what he had written, but he was determined to finish his book about Jesus. He'd spent long hours gathering all his memories together. He was pleased with the way it had turned out, and now it was nearly finished. This final part was all about the last week John had spent with Jesus, and it was important that he wrote down exactly what had happened, so that in years to come, anyone who read his book would know that these things really had happened. Demetrius, one of his brightest students, brought John his evening drink. Have you nearly finished? Almost. Would you like to see? Demetrius picked up the parchment from John's desk and began to read. Near the cross, the women watched and waited. During these last three years, they fed Jesus and cared for him. And now they stood huddled together, frightened and upset. What were they to do? What would happen after Jesus was dead? Jesus looked down, saw his mother standing there, searched the faces in the crowd, and then as if, as if he had read their minds, he called out to her. Dear woman, here is your son. Mary didn't understand what he was saying. Then she looked up and saw John, Jesus' dear friend, standing nearby. He heard Jesus say to John, Here is your mother. John moved over to Mary and put his arm around her shoulder, and together they watched and waited. A little while later, Jesus called out, It is finished. And he bowed his head and died. One by one, Mary and the women left. Jesus' body was taken down from the cross and placed in an empty tomb in a nearby garden. Oh. 
days later, John was sitting quietly with his friend Peter when the women came running up. The tomb is empty. They've taken him away and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and John leapt to their feet, looked at each other and then ran as fast as they could to the tomb. John got there first. He always did. John peered nervously into the tomb. It was gloomy inside, but he could see enough to tell that Jesus' body had gone. Just as he was trying to work out what had happened, Peter arrived, puffing and panting. He pushed past John, stumbled into the tomb, and then stopped and stared. John crept in behind him. They looked around. They blinked as their eyes got used to the gloom. All that was left was a pile of burial linen and a single white cloth folded up on one side by itself. John looked and smiled to himself. I wonder. That evening, one by one, Jesus' friends arrived at the meeting room. Once they were all safely inside, they locked the doors, frightened that the soldiers would arrest them too. The news of the empty tomb had travelled fast. What did it mean? What had happened to Jesus? Mary Magdalene was convinced she had seen Jesus. She claimed he was alive and that she had actually spoken to him. No one knew what to believe. Then suddenly, without any warning, Jesus was there, standing among them, smiling and reaching out his hand. Peace be with you. The room fell silent. They stared in amazement. Was it really true? Were their eyes playing tricks? Was this really Jesus standing right in front of them? They looked at one another. First one smiled, then another, and they burst out laughing and cheering and jumping up and down. They were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Is that how it really happened? Asked Demetrius. John nodded. And Mary? Jesus' mother stayed with you after that. John nodded again and smiled as he remembered the smell of Mary's cooking and the taste of her mats for bread. And the tomb really was empty. And you really did see him in the meeting room. So many questions. Yes, yes, yes. All these things really did happen, just as I have written. What an amazing story. And John smiled, happy that the amazing story of Jesus and his friends will be read for many years to come. John wrote down all the things that had happened when he was with Jesus it's one of the most important books in the Bible. He wants to share his memories with people like you and me. Close your eyes for a moment and think about something important that has happened to you. Something that you want to share with your friends. Now I'm going to say a prayer, and if you want to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end after me. Dear God, thank you that John wrote down all the things that he could remember about his time with Jesus. Thank you that we can still read them today. Amen. When I was a youngster growing up, this was my biggest book. It's an encyclopedia. Later years, I got this book, which was the thickest at the time. It's a bird book. 
The smallest book I've got is this one that was produced by a friend of mine in Russia. And it's a poetry book. This book, called The Train, is the longest book I have. And when it's folded out, it goes to 5.2 metres. This is a book I bought in Australia many years ago, and it's a mathematics book. This book is one that I help produce, print and produce. It's about the Sydney Opera House. This book is a history book, 1066 and all that. This book is the history of the Beano and Dandy. And this book was a Christmas present, the Beano Annual for 2021. Many years ago, I also had a Christmas present from my godparents, the Bible. And this was another present for me many years ago, the Bible again. And we have many different Bibles here. This one is from Malawi. It's in the Chichawa language. And the Bible can come in all sizes and all formats. I actually have the Bible on my Kindle and it's on a computer chip. But it doesn't matter what Bible you have, the message is always the same. And did you know the Bible has the shortest sentence of two words? And that's written in John's Gospel. It's a noun and a verb. Jesus wept. And today's story in Open the Book was about John's Gospel being written by John, the disciple of Jesus. And John wrote all about the love of God and how Jesus came to this earth to live and die and rise again for each one of us. So it doesn't matter what sort of Bible you have, the Bible always has the same message of God's love for each one of us. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read my Bible today all about God's love for me and you. So have a great week. God bless.
Jesus Christ.